Going inside the issues of our community, this is Local 12 Newsmakers. Good morning and welcome to Local 12 Newsmakers. It's hard to feel sorry for politicians, but I have to tell you, I feel sorry for the people running for Cincinnati City Council. First, there are 31 of them running for nine slots. Second, the mayor's race this year is simply sucking all the air out of the public space. It's really hard for any of the council candidates to make an impression. And third, it has, to be, it has become sport to run against council. Mayoral candidates love to talk how they're going to whip council into shape. Non-incumbents run for council by running against council. Your vote for Eve Bolton and Wendell Young can change City Hall overnight. We want a city council we can all be proud of. But we can't do it alone. Nine seats are technically up for election. Two seats are definitely open. The ones currently occupied by Alicia Reese, who ran in the primary for mayor and lost, and David Pepper, who won in the primary and is now a finalist for mayor. That means two new faces are guaranteed to be on council next year. And although incumbents have a great advantage, I think it's fair to say that at least two or three other seats are in play. Chris Monzel was reappointed to council in January to fill a vacant seat. Monzel was originally appointed in 2000, squeaked into ninth place in 2001, and after three years on council, ran 12th in 2004, more than, uh, pardon me, in 2000, uh, whatever that would have been, three, uh, more than 3,700 votes out of the running. He has to be considered vulnerable. Sam Malone won for the first time two years ago, but is running this year under the cloud of having been arrested and charged with physically abusing his son. Two weeks after the election, Malone faces a trial date. And David Crowley, though he has won twice, always seems to be uncomfortably close to the bottom. Ninth in 2003, seventh in 2001. The bedrock minimum strategy in any field race is to create a sufficient level of name recognition. That's why the city is littered with yard yard signs and TV commercials are structured to say and show the name as much as possible. Hi, I'm Leslie Giz. Growing up, my father used to say, remember your name is Giz. It meant to maintain my integrity and be respectful of others, to stand for what I believe in and lead by example, that my actions reflect on my name, Leslie Giz. If you're counting, that was three times. In field races like this, I only invite non-incumbents to appear on the program. And in a field race this big, I have to make admittedly subjective judgments about who to invite. A month ago, I was joined by Chris Bortz, Samantha Hurd, John Eby, and Cecil Thomas. This morning, four more candidates. Leslie Giz, we do know her name, is a Republican. She's 36 years old, an attorney. She once worked in City Hall as the chief labor negotiator for the city. She is making her second race for council. Two years ago, she ended up in 11th, not quite 3,000 votes out of ninth place. Damon Lynch is uh, <coughs> making his second race for council. He is the pastor uh, of, I blank because all this went over Prospect Baptist Church on Elm Street and over the Rhine in 2000. He finished 10th just 700 votes out of ninth place. Jeff Birding is a Democrat. He served as vice chair of the Cincinnati Electoral Reform Commission, appointed by Charlie Lucan a number of years ago. Currently is director of sales and public affairs for the Cincinnati Bengals. And Wendell Young is a Democrat. He grew up in Avondale, worked for 25 years as a Cincinnati police officer, including an assignment as a school resource officer for Withrow High School. I'm sure that was instructive. After retirement, he worked as an assistant director of personnel and equal employment opportunity officer for the Cincinnati for the city of Cincinnati. Welcome to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And, Thank you very much. and uh, we're going to see just what goes. I know you all have spent hours and hours together on the campaign trail. Damon and I were talking the other night right. that all of you know what everybody's going to say before you say it. So my job this morning is to ask questions that you haven't talked about yet. So let me ask this question, begin with. When Valerie Lemmy left uh, a few weeks ago, uh, she did a scathing analysis in the Cincinnati Herald about the way city council works. Both city ca mayor ca candidates are talking about reorganizing council, making sure it really works right. What do you think about the role of council members in relationship to the mayor and to the city manager? And did, was Valerie <coughs> Lemmy on the right track? Let's start with you, Leslie. Uh, 
she she was right about what she said. She did catch an awful lot of flack from city council members. And technically, council members are there to support the mayor, and they are there. The mayor is there to, or the city manager is there to be his choice and to um, run the administration essentially. And then the mayor sort of takes a role in it uh, that I don't think that Charlie Lucan took in in being mayor. But when she was criticizing City Hall, while I agreed with everything she said, I worked under her. She was my boss for a time. Um, I was I was disappointed because she really could have fought back. I was very excited when she came in and she let people on council beat her down and then threw her hands up and said, I'm done. And you just can't take a job like that and, and let that happen. Damon, what's your observation about how that operates? <coughs> well, I was shocked that Valerie took those swipes as she left. Usually, uh, professionally, that doesn't happen. We've had a lot of good people come to Cincinnati and school superintendents and other positions who left here disgruntled but didn't take those public swipes uh, as Valerie did with City Council. I'm not so sure that City Council is there to support the mayor. I think City Council is there as representatives of the people to work with the mayor and work with the city manager to implement policy and make sure and when, as, with the city manager as he or she makes sure that the city runs smoothly. So I think the new council will have to work with the mayor, and it's key uh, that the mayor is able to build a team, <coughs> that council can build a team, and work with the new city manager to ensure that our city runs properly. Do you agree that council needs to be managed in a different way than it has in the past? I think both the people running for mayor and I, I guess the manager would now say, or the former manager would say that. Not necessarily. I don't like the term managed. Uh, Again, council persons will be voted in by the, the electorate, and they will be expected to represent the voices and wishes of the people and provide policy to uh, bring those to pass. Okay. Wendell, what about you on this? What do you, you've been around City Hall, you've been a city employee for a long time. It was your commercial that we showed at the beginning with City Hall sort of bulging at the <laughs> seams, uh, which is fun. Uh, what do you think about this? I agree with Leslie. I was very excited when Valerie first came to Cincinnati, but I also agree with Damon. Um, I was surprised that she took the shot she took when she left. I've seen several city managers in my time, and, and I've seen a good number of them take some really tough beatings from city council. And though I often cringe when council does that, what I do know is that a good city manager has to have a very thick skin. And so it bothered me, but I think that part of the problem was Valerie showed early on, in my opinion, that Cincinnati was not necessarily high on her list of priorities. Uh, she was missing in action on several events where I thought a city manager should have been there and, and showed some leadership. And I, I will also disagree that she didn't have opportunity to lead. I believe a good city manager, in the absence of what may appear to be direction, finds a way to seek that direction from the people who you're employed by and implement a policy. So I think that the role there is really twofold. I think that if she doesn't get direction, she finds a way to do that. If she gets direction, she carries that direction out. You know, this, to put another twist on this, Jeff, you can add on to what we've been talking about, but there is going to be a new city manager, obviously. Should council have a role in choosing that city manager? Well, uh, as a leader of the effort that led to the direct election of the mayor, as a member of the Electoral Reform Commission that uh, advised that the cities that are passing us by have strong executive mayors where the manager reports to the mayor and is the chief administrative officer of the mayor's agenda that the mayor was elected on, I personally feel that the manager should work directly for the mayor and should be uh, sort of the administrator. But that's not the system we have now. No, you asked if okay, how right. I think it would work better. I think having a manager that's taken direction from nine council members plus a mayor leads to the pass the buck mentality that we've paid a heavy price for. Uh, I think that the dysfunctional, the broken politics that we've had at City Hall uh, has paid a, uh, has cost us tremendously as a city. All the people leaving, the murders, uh, the neighborhoods that feel in decline, you have strong neighborhood organizations feel like they don't get partnership from City Hall. It's a broken system. Uh, we need a new team on council, but we really need to change the mentality uh, that we have at City Hall and add a level of accountability that we currently lack. Do as we have two real, this is not a theoretical uh, thing, we have two real people running for mayor. For each of you, can you tell me what difference it makes whether Mark Mallory or David Pepper wins in terms of how you imagine things rolling out here? Damon? Well, I, I support Mark Mallory. I <coughs> publicly stated that, and I saw yesterday that there are others who support David Pepper. 
Uh, I think clearly Mark is what he says he is. He is a consensus builder. I think Mark is the needed change for Cincinnati. Uh, both are good people, but I think Mark brings his 10 years of experience in Columbus, uh, his ability to work with state government. Can you imagine yourself working with either one? Sure. sure. Do you have a relationship with David? I've met both. I know both. I've worked with both. Leslie, what about you? You're, you're the lone Republican up here. Well, I support David Pepper. I don't think that's any secret, but, um, you know, there's a lot that goes with that. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of there's a friendship. There is a, having, me having followed him on city council. Um, for those who don't know, Mark Mallory isn't my state senator, so I don't really follow what he is doing other than my relationships with other Republican members of the Senate. How do you think that will House. affect, though, uh, the relationship of mayor and city council? Well, I, I think that uh, if Mark gets elected, then uh, I think we'll all be fine with him. It doesn't bother me in the least bit that, you know, and I don't think he will, it will bother him and uh, vice versa. With David, if he gets elected, I don't think it's going to bother him that, you know, it's their job is to move the city forward, not to worry about what council members did in the election in, in, in 2005. They have different styles, Wendell. Do you think it makes a difference in your mind, which one, and looking at if you're a member of council? No, I, I think if I'm a member of council, I can work with either one of them. I, I, I think that we're blessed in the sense that whichever one of them is elected mayor, we're going to have a good leader. It's just a matter of do you prefer one over the other. I think without doubt, Mark Mallory has a lot of charisma. Um, I think he appears very approachable. Uh, David, on the other hand, I think is very knowledgeable. He's obviously one who does his homework. Um, he's almost a nerd in terms of, of getting into the meat of the politics. So I, I think that whichever one of them gets elected, you know, we, we've got a good mayor on our hands. And just for the record, I do support David Pepper. Okay. Yeah. Jeff. Well, I think it's critical that the new mayor and the council come in and start solving the problems of this city and get past the broken politics. And I've committed to both Mark and David, I'm friends with both of them, that the best thing I can do to help them is to get elected to council and once they get a mandate from the voters with their election, be their chief advocate to move the city forward and start solving the problems. Okay. One of the things that's on the ballot this year, and I'm afraid that a lot of voters probably haven't even focused on this, in the city of Cincinnati, it's issue eight, which is to change the way council gets paid. Right now, the pay of council is automatically pegged at a certain level in relationship to county commissioners. This would change that and it would require that council, if they're going to get a raise or change their pay, would have to vote on that in front of the people. It wouldn't be automatic. Wendell, where do you stand on that? I don't think that's a bad idea at all. I, I, I think that the public would really prefer that if council is going to get a raise, that it not be something that looks like it's sneaky. I think upfront and, and personal is really the way to do it. I also like the provision in that, that if council votes itself a raise, that council is not necessarily going to benefit from that. It's the council following them. So I think it's a very fair and a very transparent way to do business. We'll probably pay Let us. me throw in also, do you think the pay, pay for council right now is, what, 61, 60? 60. 60? Okay. Is that the right level? I really don't know. I mean, it's a part-time job. It seems like a lot of money to me. Okay. Jeff? Uh, I support the issue but I agree that it's a tepid measure. Uh, if you look at uh, city councils across the country, we're well, I think, overpaid here. It is a part-time job. I think it attracts a lot of people who are, it would be the best paying job they'll ever get. I'd like to return to the days where it's about public service. That's what this should be about. You return, would you do that by cutting the salary? I, to force people back into the other jobs? Uh, yeah, I'd like to see a ballot issue put on next year. Okay. Leslie. Sounds like you've been reading my website. <laughs> <laughs> no, just the Electoral Reform uh, Commission report. No, I, uh, I, I, uh, I'm going to, so I absolutely support issue eight and I'm going to vote for it. I, uh, I think, and I have been out on the uh, campaign trail saying that it, it, council members get paid far too much for a number of reasons, but it should be cut in half. And council members, the only way that's going to happen is to get a ballot referendum on. And um, council members just can't seem to, that, that hurts them to do that. Damon, right. where are you? I agree with issue eight. There ought to be some transparency in council raises. Uh, I also agree with Leslie and Jeff. Uh, we're, I don't think any of us up here are running for $60,000. Right. We're running for the people of Cincinnati for the issues that they're concerned about and that we think we can help make a difference on. Okay. Stay tuned. We're going to come right back 
but we got a lot of other topics to, to pick up. One break. Welcome back. I'm joined this morning by four candidates for the 31 for City Council. Leslie Giz, who's a Republican, Damon Lynch, who's a Democrat, Jeff Birding, who's a Democrat, and Wendell Young, who's a Democrat. Um, let's take a look at some, a variety of issues here that maybe some of you face. Damon, on your website and in your presentations out in the community, you talk a lot about economic development this year. Right. How is it that you can talk about that when you were the leader of the boycott? Why is it that, you know, that switch can be made and why should we believe it? Well, because that was one of the issues of the boycott, economic development. It was one of the, besides police issues, uh, economic development was one of the major issues uh, that a large segment of the community was <coughs> fighting uh, for their communities and, and for their families uh, around economics. And, and while the boycott didn't get resonance from the political powers in the city, which is a real issue uh, that I and I believe others on council, if any other group decided to boycott this city as a council person, I would sit down and talk with them uh, because I wouldn't want a boycott in Cincinnati. And at the time of the boycott that just uh, that is now, we didn't have the political leadership that was willing to sit down and You're talk. Are you saying that nobody sat down and talked? No, no one in political leadership. You were, when the boycott started, the, the current mayor labeled people economic terrorists, and this was after 911. Right. And so, when you label somebody a terrorist, you immediately say that we can't sit down and talk with these people. Um, when you sit, talk about economic development, what kind of economic development are you talking about? Job creation, neighborhood development, balancing downtown development with neighborhood development. You know, we have this idea that a vibrant downtown is the key to the entire region, and that's partly true. But after $600 million worth of stadiums, $100 million for a museum, $42 million for Fountain Square, 6.6 .6 for Saks, and I can go on and on right, and right. on, and yet we still have dying neighborhoods. So I think we need to balance neighborhood right. development with downtown development. Anybody want to jump in on this? Because I'm going to ask each of you. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I, I heard uh, Damon Lynch speak at, at the Clifton Town Meeting, and I heard him make an analysis to the gay rights movement uh, versus the, the uh, in, in Cincinnati versus the boycott, and I just disagree with the analysis. Um, you know, the, the people that wanted the repeal of Article 12 did not go out and loot and burn things in the streets and cause our police to have to go into overtime and cause the fire department to have to be surrounded by the police, and it, it angered me to a degree that now uh, we're in this position where we're saying that that is okay. It's not okay to behave like that. It's okay to not like things and it's okay to, to think okay. that there is social injustice, but there's, it's not okay to do the things that um, I feel um, you know, Mr. Lynch was part of. Now I have no clue what she's talking about. Your question was the boycott. She went to the civil unrest and the riots of April 2001, which, which are totally non-related. They're two separate things. Uh, and so for her to say that anybody justifies rioting when nobody does or did, uh, this just political speak. And what she heard Talk me say, her. what Talk she what she heard me say in Clifton, was that as people raise a boycott issue, there was a boycott in 1993 of the city by the gay community because of the passage of issue three. And when the boycott boycott question is raised, no one ever mentions that boycott. As a matter of fact, I was just with Equality Cincinnati last night because I'm endorsed by them. And they know they had a boycott against the city, against travel and tourism, because they had issues that they were concerned about and wanted to see change in the which city. Which is perfectly fine. Ex and so that's what we were talking about, a boycott, which was perfectly fine, because the African-American community, you led these I led people, these people, and that's what they did, and you justified it. You said No it one was ever justified. Okay. You, you never heard me say that. I'm not saying it now, and I've never said it before. And okay. so that's just political speak. All, obviously, there's a lot here, but I got, for time reasons, Jeff, I want to uh, show a little bit of your television commercial and then okay. come back and ask you something. Let's take a look at Jeff Birding's commercial, part of it. Citizens of Cincinnati, we deserve a city that has safe streets, better schools, and clean neighborhoods, and a city council that makes that happen for us. I'm Jeff Birding, and I have been a leader for change for our neighborhoods at the United Way and our city government for more than 10 years. Jeff. What I find interesting is that in the commercial, on your website, 
although it's mentioned there. What you don't mention is your long association with the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, we all support the team, okay, and they're actually doing well this year. Okay, great. But there is a real issue here between the Bengals and the city about financing the struggle over leases and all of that. Is there, do you have a conflict of interest to be an employee of the Bengals and to be running for, or to be on council? Can you, re, can you continue as an employee of the Bengals and be on council? Sure, Dan, because that's not true. The, the Bengals' relationship is with Hamlin Accounting, not with the city. The struggles that you're talking about are with the county. I'm not running for county commissioner. I'm running for city council. I'm running for city council because after spending the last 20 years trying to make this community better as a private citizen, I decided that my work is best uh, found at City Hall to try to provide the kind of leadership I've provided at the United Way, that I've provided at the Greater Cincinnati Housing Alliance, that I've provided as a leader of the effort to directly elect the mayor and on the Electoral Reform Commission, uh, the, a leader of bringing lists so to you, Cincinnati. So you don't see this as uh, Bengals versus city at all? That's not the issue? It's never been. It's the, well, the conflict it's not the way I remember it, but okay. The, the, I mean, we certainly have, there, there have certainly been uh, issues with the county, and I obviously, like the rest of the citizens of this community, hope we can get past that and focus on football on the field, which is all of a sudden shed in a nice national light on Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's a national light that other cities like Toledo and Lexington and Louisville would die for. Okay. Leslie, question for you. Uh, back in January, uh, you wanted to replace Pat DeWine on council, and the Republican Party, through its internal maneuverings, decision making, gave it to Chris Monzel. Why do you think that happened, and how do you feel about that and the relationship to the party at this stage? Well, my relationship with the party is very good. The people in the party supported me. It wasn't a party decision. The party decision was Who, then for whose me, decision was it? Was Sam Malone's by charter. So. When I say that, that's strictly speaking via the charter, and I think some legal pundits let him know that there's really nothing that can be done while you're supposed to, you know, you should, in good conscience, take the advice from your party. It's technically yours to make. So he made the decision, and I truly believe it was probably mostly based on my support for the repeal of Article 12. And my relationship with the party is fine. You know, Sam's going to have to answer to voters in a few days, and, and, and so is uh, Chris Monzel, and we'll, we'll see what they have to say about it. Sam Malone, Chris Monzel, you, John Eby, are all running. Can you, if you get on council with one or both of those others, Will you be able to work with them? Sure. I mean, you, you have to work. I work every day with people I don't like. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It just okay. means you have, that's your job. That's what you do. Wendell, you spent years as a uh, police officer. Everybody in this <coughs> campaign, mayors, council people, they're all running against crime. Hey, what do you know? We're all opposed to crime. Um, is there really any thing, silver bullet, is there any fundamental thing that you know that others don't know because you're an ex-police officer that can help on this? There is no silver bullet. We, the, the crime situation we have in Cincinnati, we need to put in perspective. It's bad for Cincinnati because in Cincinnati we really are spoiled. We, we believe that we should have what we've always had, a clean, safe city. And even as a child when I was growing up, I can't think of a neighborhood that you couldn't walk into and feel safe. That's not the case all over Cincinnati anymore. Some of our communities, you do feel safe doing that. But there are other communities, and I say this when I'm out. We, in this city, we have a curfew for children. But in some of our neighborhoods, there's a curfew for adults. We have adults in our city who do not feel safe after dark. We have adults in our city who try to be in their homes before a certain hour. And we've seen it. We've seen a person die in the park, we see the man die in his home. So yeah, it's a real problem here. Okay, unfortunately I'm out of time. Everybody has more to say, but go to the websites, follow the paper. We still have 10 days till the election. Last week when we dealt with the races for municipal judge, we made a mistake. A district, in District 1, we talked about both candidates, Cheryl Grant and Rosalind Flores, but I failed to get Ros Flores' name on the introductory screen. I apologize for the mistake. Okay, and thank you for joining us this morning and making Newsmakers a part of your Sunday morning. Next week, the two mayoral candidates. Stay tuned for election night. Thank you.